Even if sometimes you feel a bit lost, you have to face it and be the boss. Well, it's been an absolutely fantastic day uh, here in Nijmegen and it's been wonderfully warm. Uh, see it's 35 degrees uh, take a look at that I don't know if it'll focus on there 35 degrees uh, it's 4 p.m. and uh, I've been working all day I've had a few conference calls for uh, one or two uh, meetings and projects I'm involved in a board I sit on and uh, I've been working on my research we'll talk a bit about that in a moment but uh, now I need to get out and get a few supplies because uh, otherwise I'll have nothing to eat over the next day or two so I'm gonna head out there into the beauty uh, I've got my Brompton bike ready and uh, we'll enjoy some of the good Dutch summer weather look at that of the coolest things about being in Holland and that is that I get to uh, ride my bike everywhere so <laughs> it is so much fun riding a uh, bike around and the weather's good I mean I have been here in winter when it's been wet and cold and snowy but uh, summertime is definitely the time to uh, enjoy a bike in Holland okay uh, before I kill myself, let me switch off the camera and get to the store. Okay, so let's uh, hop off the bike. Uh, I'm on the main campus of the university at the moment and uh, on my way to uh, the store to go and get some uh, groceries. Now, uh, for the last couple of days, I've been working on a, a section of, of uh, my new research project. I'm working on a second PhD uh, in intercultural Bible reading, uh, looking specifically at how we can bring together uh, people from very different uh, social, racial, uh, ethnic, religious, perhaps even theological groupings, uh, specifically to read texts of forgiveness. And in my case, we're reading uh, Matthew chapter 18 from verses 15 to 35. It's a very complex text that talks about uh, individual and social aspects, spiritual and political aspects uh, of forgiveness. I'll, I'll add another a different uh, post about uh, that specific aspect. I'm using Ken Wilber's AQAL, all quadrants, all levels, integral theory to, uh, to plot that. Uh, the social and the individual, the interior and the exterior, the spiritual and the political. But um, this week particularly I've been struck by uh, what's been happening in the news. You know, the bombings in Nice in France, uh, the killings in uh, Pakistan, the uh, American uh, primary race, Donald Trump. Uh, I'm still astounded that uh, the world could uh, come to this where someone who's so blatantly racist and prejudiced uh, can can come to to receive a, a nomination as a presidential candidate it, it uh, blows my mind and um, in particular the work that I've been doing on intergroup contact theory uh, which deals very much with this notion of prejudice uh, I guess I've even expressed some prejudices just in this video but how we view others in relation to ourselves, this notion of social psychology, social identity in relation to individual identity has occupied uh, a great deal of my thought over the last couple of days. So I thought, let me talk to you a little bit about that uh, while I'm on my way to get my groceries. Now, isn't this just the most uh, wonderful setting in which uh, we are? Today's a, a particularly beautiful day. The last couple of days, it's been the Vierdaagse, I'll put a link to that uh, in the show notes. 
uh, over the last couple of days, but it's been so hot. Today was uh, 35 degrees, which is, uh, it reminds me a lot of, of Cape Town. <laughs> of course, not in the winter. But um, on the news last night, I saw some coverage of the Republican National Convention and um, particularly Donald Trump's uh, speech to that convention and the series of speakers, uh, congressmen and women, uh, former actors and uh, uh, well-known personalities. And it seemed that uh, the theme that they had, Make America Safe Again, uh, was bypassed. It was overshadowed by the theme of fear. And um, I've heard this before. I mean, certainly in South Africa, um, before the end of apartheid, this uh, narrative, this discourse around fear, trying to get those who are the dominant grouping, which certainly white Americans are, white South Africans were uh, in the apartheid regime, they still happen to be the dominant political and economic grouping in South Africa, but getting that dominant grouping to maintain its grip on society, its authority, its, its power, by appealing to their greatest fears is not an unknown strategy. Uh, Adolf Hitler uh, employed it during National Socialism. As I said, it was employed uh, during apartheid. We've seen it in Rwanda. And uh, I don't want to draw direct parallels with what's happening in America, but certainly Donald Trump seems to be drawing on the worst of people's social identity fears. In other words, what does my identity mean in relation to the identity of others? How do I form my primary way of being in the world and protect the values and uh, what I believe to be uh, true and necessary of the in-group in relation to an out-group. And it's particularly difficult when uh, the in-group is a, a majority group, a group that holds majority power, influence, political power, social power or economic power. And um, the guy who started this whole field of research after the end of the Second World War when soldiers were returning uh, particularly to America um, and seeing how they were dealing with prejudice, dealing with a, a nuanced and uh, complex social order that they were returning to in the United States is a guy called Gordon Alport. And uh, his work uh, kicked this whole thing off. He dealt with a notion called uh, a hypothesis called contact theory, looking at how people develop social contact between in-groups and out-groups and what the power relations are uh, between those uh, groupings in society. Okay, uh, I've perched my uh, bike up uh, against the light pole here. I'm going to stand still for just a moment because I realize uh, walking through uh, the shadow and the sunlight is not so good for my little camera. It doesn't cope quite so well with it. But uh, to get back to Gordon Elport, um, his particular book, uh, his hypothesis, contact theory hypothesis, uh, suggested that um, people have these prejudices. In-groups form their identity, their social cohesion, uh, the way in which they uh, form their views of themselves often uh, in opposition to the other and I see this uh, throughout the world men form a particular view of themselves in relation to women so there's certain aspects of maleness that we form in negation to other we are male in the sense that we are not female a sort of negative identity I see it in race groups in class groups in age groups it falls into all these different sort of stratifications or classes in society and certainly uh, it forms very much uh, into the notions of uh, what we see in terms of in-group and out-group politics, the way in which we structure ourselves. Mbembe calls this uh, a politics of identity, how we begin to attach certain prejudged characteristics to uh, another group and begin to think of them in certain ways. Whether it's true or not, uh, we've adopted this socially. Perhaps it's been informed by a stereotype. Uh, that we have of a particular grouping. So all men are this way, or all white people are a certain way, or all black people are a certain way. And it's very difficult to engage those prejudices, and often it's those prejudices that mediate the way in which uh, we engage others. So this controls our social interaction. And two things are identified by Alport. Uh, he speaks about uh, the, the moderating factors and the mediating factors. Now, the mediating factors are the how of, uh, of intergroup contact theory. Uh, in other words, what are those things that we can do in order to facilitate a positive intergroup contact? And the moderating factors are those things that have to do with our psychological affect, how we feel 
about the contact uh, with the, the out-group from our in-group perspective. Now from Alport's uh, perspective, the one thing that, uh, that he spoke about in terms of those moderating factors is that what we tend to see happening in intergroup uh, contact situations is that when we have distrust, when we have prejudice against another group, what tends to happen is our anxiety rises and our empathy decreases. In other words, we become suspicious of the other group, of their motives, of their way of being in the world. Because we don't understand it, we sometimes judge it. And uh, because of that, we find it very difficult to associate with them as persons, as human beings. Uh, we find it difficult to understand why do they dress that way or speak that way? Why do they interact in a certain way? Why does their culture allow certain things? And what the intergroup contact theory suggests is that we have a responsibility to mediate our prejudices. We have a responsibility to engage them and to encounter people, uh, other people, so that we can deconstruct prejudice and find uh, the true identity of the other. Now one of my favorite authors, uh, Walter Wink, once said that violent revolution is a very ineffective form of change or transformation. Because what it does is it changes the rulers without changing the rules. It works for an end uh, without considering the means. And I tend to agree with Walter Wink on that. I think that sometimes uh, we forget that our lot as human persons is tied in with other human persons. Our dignity is shared. Our common humanity is something that binds us to one another. Particularly, I think, for those of us who uh, are Christians or persons of faith, we, we have to come to the understanding that um, even though we may think that we're pretty special, uh, God loves all people equally. And that the difference that we encounter in others is not so strange uh, for God. It may just be a reflection of some of the uniqueness or difference of God's own nature or character. So here's the thing that I want to invite you to think about. Um, particularly if you are a leader, a pastor, a teacher, a community leader, maybe even in your own family. What can you do to interrogate and engage your own prejudices? To, to see what there is in yourself that may not necessarily be true about the outgroup against which you're prejudiced, about the other. What is there that you can do to facilitate a positive contact, uh, to create that space where you encounter one another? Now, the interesting thing about intergroup contact theory is that some of the most recent and most valuable research shows that friendship uh, across those lines of race or color or gender is one of the most effective ways uh, to deal with prejudice and break down uh, the sense of inequality, the sense of brokenness between ourselves and the other. So I really want to encourage you, I'll put some links in, in, in the show notes. Uh, if you're interested to read a little more about this, it would be wonderful uh, for you to follow those links. Uh, I'll add a couple of those uh, in the show notes and hopefully we can think together about what it means to, to share our humanity with others, uh, to appreciate difference and, uh, and not to subject people to our prejudices. So thanks for watching the vlog. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Uh, I need to uh, hop back on my bicycle and get to the store before it closes. It's a wonderful day uh, in Nijmegen and I may head out a little later for a run. If you've liked uh, the vlog or if it's made sense to you or even if you disagree, why don't you leave me a comment uh, down below. Uh, you can follow me on uh, various social media platforms at Digital Dion on Instagram uh, and on Twitter. And uh, why don't you subscribe to this feed and you'll get notified whenever uh, new episodes are loaded. Go check through uh, the previous episodes there might be something interesting for you there to watch so thanks for watching and uh, I'm gonna get going now That's fair.